Welcome everyone to the 307th weekly MLP Drawing School live critique stream. It's somehow mid-January, like 18th. Yeah, somewhere around there. It's only 6 o'clock, we swear. 6.03 somewhere. Uh, we got a small horde of people in a nice little group of art. So first up on our list alphabetically, of course, is Vex. Hello. <laughs> An alley claw? Wait a moment. Oh, that's that's one. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Make it up today. <laughs> uh, there might be CPC in the background knifing up stuff. Uh, they are being quiet. Uh, Len, are you joining us? Sweet. I always join in silence sometimes. Uh, we got a pixin up. Oh, uh, it's and, the sound uh, of a picky. Yeah. Zai Delta I. <laughs> I suppose. And we have a living underscore derp. <laughs> <laughs> That's a mood. Um... Yeah. All right. Um, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. If you have any art you'd like to submit. Uh, minimum down payment of twenty nine ninety five sent to this private PayPal that in no way is linked to MLPDS, and then we'll eventually get to it. Or a Bitcoin. Or a Bitcoin. But like, like I I'm want a mesmerized a because one. my uh, my tablet has like a tiny weeny little itty bitty circle under the pen when you're drawing, but also there's the one on Aggie which has like the like. Uh, the stabilization making it lag behind, so it's like a the one little circle is pulling the bigger one, and it's like really fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> and it's distracted by the circles. Brilliant. Yeah, Roman circles. All right. Well, seeing as uh one of the pictures is people who are currently no, with actually. us, embroidered equations, and then we'll do uh, which one next? Which one next? Do we want to do lens after that one? Sure. So we're going to work uh, backwards here, starting from the right. Stand up. Inverted equations. They were asking, uh, can't get the backmost leg on the main full body to look right. Also, unsure about the blue scarla. Scar scarlera? Scarlera. Thank you. Uh, because I couldn't <laughs> have it with the white... Uh, with the eyelashes, as well as introducing more colors, specifically for the cutie mark. I usually try and keep the number of colors in my entire design to a minimum. Yeah, that's a, that's a good practice. <laughs> yeah, it's a very good practice. Future stuff will always thank you for it. <laughs> oh, are we starting with M's? We are. Okay, because I, I heard keeping the number of colors to a minimum, so I was, I was confused. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, Burn. a minimum in comparison to some other people's. I think it's, yeah. it's good to set where you are. You can have a minimum palette and still be complicated with it, to be fair. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. Let me let me see. Oh, what a good horse. The, I think... One... Go ahead. I think, is this... I think, is this the one that um, uh, M was concerned looked like they were going to fall over? Yeah, the, the back... Sorry, uh, they were saying back right leg... I love back I love most leg. So back most the one leg. that's gluing, glowing. Oh, okay. I think I think that's in a decent position. I think uh, if you want to sort of increase stability or whatever, um, you just need to like sort of bring this leg that way a little bit, so it's like a bit more of a triangle. I think that. Um, you posted like a sketch in the critique stream or so, sorry, in the critique channel or something along those lines. And I think how to solve that one would have been to bring these two legs sort of out this kind of direction. Because I think the original pose looked like they were going to topple over that way. But I think this one's all right. Like this one looks pretty decent. Especially like with the flaring out of this part of the hoof of that like back front hoof there. I think that like increases the stability a lot to the point where it's not a big concern. Mm 
you could modify this uh, leg here to, you know, maybe be out a little bit less, but like there or something like that. But to be honest, from what I'm seeing, I think that the interest in terms of like pose that this, the shape of this back leg produces outweighs the, um, you know, any sort of worry about it being like slightly off model or slightly whatever. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. As long as you've got like the overall balance mostly sorted, yeah, it's pretty right. And I think you've done this, you've done that with this. You can also cheat, um, just like you said, by rotating the body or just assuming they're hover horses. Just saying. It's always a convenient option. Yeah. And also unsure about the blue sclera because I couldn't have a wipe the eyelashes. Interesting. Yeah. I think that bit is like the that bit is like the eye. Uh, I think if you want it to like, if you want that bit specifically to look a bit more natural, just making it like a slightly lighter color than the uh, pupil of the other eye would work. But yeah, I wouldn't stress too much. Very minor changes to sort of increase the readability. No, no like major overhauls needed in terms of color changes or whatever, I don't think. Yeah. So she's got cute speckles on the the front left, front right of her um, shoulders and then every hoof except for the one with the little glowing symbol. Is that a mistake or is that on purpose? Because it seems to she's speckled everywhere else. Is this just yeah, I think it an she has like a metal leg. Down oh, here. this looks different from the other ones. Mm, let's see. Mm. Perfect. It definitely doesn't re like it doesn't tell me it's metal. It doesn't suggest that at all. Mm. I I would almost um for something like this I would almost draw a separate detail shot to show the leg without any glow on it and show specifically where it's separated because you have mm. the power button covered as well as just the glow kind of covers up the lines and I only really see two of the lines and I wouldn't have put it together that it's a detachable leg like even over here I was a little confused just because we have a such, such a complex angle I was mm. just it kind of looked like a mini hoof so I wasn't sure if where and what connects why so if you did like another like a let me get a different color like something here where it's like oh here's the back leg um and then you detail like the aspects that are, you know, robotic and you can see clearly the, you know, the power button, all that kind of fun stuff. Just might be helpful for someone who wants to draw it. Who doesn't know all the information. Mm -hmm. I really like whoever put these shines on it. That that sells it more to me that it's different material than the rest of the horse. Yeah, sometimes subtleties like that can really help to show different, like, textures without going too overboard. Some, something that I've seen um, on Twitter a little bit is people doing... Uh, what they'll do is they'll have a, uh, a few different balls, a few different circles, and what they'll try to do is they'll try to um, add decoration to it or add like texture to it uh, to show that they're different materials. So like one of them will be like, you know, a um, a metal sort of ball and they'll try to sort of texture it and do all that sort of stuff to sort of show that it's that. And one of them will be like, you know, a soft plush kind of like a, a thing. And, you know, one of them will be like a gel sort of stuff with uh, colors behind it and all that sort of thing and they use it to sort of practice texturing stuff and showing off different kinds of 
uh, rendering techniques and all that sort of stuff. So that could be interesting in terms of um, practicing, like how to show off that this part here is metal and the rest of it is like, you know, fuzzy and maybe the hair being shiny and all that sort of stuff. I forgot what the challenge is called, but I see it um, floating around art Twitter a bit. So it might be interesting to take a look and see if that calls to you. Yeah, I think they're just called material studies. Mm. Like you, you can see them in cubes and orbs and what have you. Heck yeah. They did say the legs are actually buttons, not, um, they, they didn't say it's not metal, but didn't imply that it is metal because I don't think the Intuos ones are metal. Mm -hmm. So even then, I would still suggest that it's some type of different separation. The, the black yeah, lines don't show like... up on a dark body. Mm -hmm. Maybe put, like, vertical lines there as well, make them look more sectioned if you want them to be buttons. Mm. That's what I would do. Okay. Yeah, I mean, even if you want to keep it more um, subtle, I think just having that detail shot explaining everything will be leaps leaps of helpfulness. Because sometimes color design just or just an OC has a subtle thing, but it's like a detail that just needs explaining. And when you have like this glow covering it up, it's hard to understand and learn that. Heck yeah. I, I read uh I read somewhere someone someone once said something and it kind of makes sense to me. It's like when you're designing a reference sheet, everyone you want to picture everyone who's ever gonna read this reference sheet as dumb. They're gonna be dumb, 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 <laughs> dumb. You wanna explain it to them like they're a baby. You want it to be that clear, just so people understand. Like there's nothing you can screw up. Because a lot of the time people hand stuff over and it's like there's lots of little things and changes and sometimes there's even the debate where like oh uh, what species is it like do i want to make it look more like a dog even though it's like a i don't know a cheetah but the reference sheet looks like a dog but it's a cheetah should i draw it more like a dog it's, it's just like as long as yeah, you're explicit when you, when you get like a, the generic sort of like furry style for like the, when you commission like a ref sheet or something and it's like, hmm, what case <laughs> case in point i'm reading i'm reading this right now and i'm dumb boom Theory confirmed. It's no. Um, <laughs> yeah. it says not metal, just a regular leg with lines around it. Okay, fair enough. In in that case, um, including some like little bits of uh, fuzz down here and all that sort of stuff would help uh, sell that it's like the same sort of texture as all the stuff up here. Oh, come on, sir. Come on. And oh, rip! All right, let's move on to our next lovely picture then. Unless if you got any further questions for us. I like the color palette. It's very pleasing to me. The whole grayscale and just like vibrant colors. Those Thanks definitely guys. pop. And that yeah. that pose. The the rightmost pose. Oh my god, that's so adorable. It's so cute. Now I just want to do a hoodie pony pony in the same one, and just holding on <laughs> the little hoodie le leads. No more questions. They said I they're going to be cleaning up their text and stuff, so. Sure. All right, let's go on to the next one. Whoop. Hey, buddy, who's on this stream right now. We got your <laughs> picture coming up. Come on. 
You got any questions in particular for us on this sad horse? Oh, cutie. Anatomy was so hard. <laughs> and I'm it still is. not satisfied with it. What are you not satisfied with? Mostly the legs. But, I, like, I don't know how to tell you, like, oh, there's a part of the leg that's, like, too long or too short. I just, I know there's something wrong with them, but I don't know how to point it out. Did you get a chance to look at the the thingy I made? Was was uh, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was there anything like um, with that that didn't make sense or like uh? So there's something wrong with the legs. Here, let me let me backtrack. Sorry. What kind of pose were you aiming for? Like, is are they sitting on a flat surface or is one leg kind of dangling? What kind of feel? This is yeah, sitting on a uh, flat surface. Gotcha. There we go. Oh no. It was a it was a survey, an economic survey. Did you tell him mm -hmm. it's all fucked and then just hung up? Yeah, 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 yeah. Good, good. They were they were like, which which of these insurances do you have? Life, home and contents, car insurance, this, that, and I was health insurance. And I was like, uh none. You know, it's it's fine. Don't worry about it. Jeez. Asking all these questions. Wait, don't you own a car? <laughs> no. Okay. I, don't, I, I have a learner's permit, but not a full license. Okay. I just I just don't I just don't need it. When I when I need it, I'll get it, but I haven't needed it for twenty five years. So uh, twenty nine years or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Forgot your own age. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> nah, it's, it's all the same. Money for art supplies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's it. More money for art supplies. I am actually getting a wheel and pedal set that I can plug into the computer so that I can practice driving. So that's Ooh. fun. That's exciting. You're just going to drift. Yeah, yeah I'm so going to drift. That's just being the folk. Anyway, we got a picture here. We, we, we'll have chit chat in a bit. We oh, we do have a picture. I'm interrupting. Um, horse legs was the problem. Who has yep. drawn over horse legs? I, I made an attempt at, uh, at sort of repositioning the leg based on sort of the plane that I see them sitting on. And maybe this isn't 100% accurate, but it's it close enough to sort of illustrate what I'm talking about of her. You can sort of like move them to be more sort of aligned uh, within this sort of square. Um, mm. it, it can it can be super easy. Like, false perspective is so like unintuitive, I find. Like, it's it's really something you have to push and exaggerate in order to really, like, get a feel of it. Because a lot of the time, like, you can push and push and just, like, push it more and more into, like, the viewpoint and it just still feels like it's falling short. And, like, sometimes it's really hard to notice when, like, a limb is just kind of, like, play strong. Mm. Since they're not, like, sitting on, like, a like a, a cinder block with, like, their leg, their, like, uh, the right leg, like, up on top of the thing and the left one dangling down, you said they're sitting on a flat surface, the, this one would just sort of be pulled up a little bit just to sort of fit with the... So it's mm. sort of symmetrical, as it, as, it, as it were. It'd be more foreshortened. Yeah. If if you wanted to, you could even... Cool. Yeah, you could even, like, keep the same, like, front-facing thing and, like, just have it, like, have the hoof end like, yeah. out here. Or... You can push the angle out for sure. Exactly, yeah. You can have a lot of fun with it. But, yeah, fore, foreshortening more is always useful. The front legs, I feel like, are pretty good. Mm. I don't think there's anything do, to worry about there. I feel the far one, like her right side, it's a little bit high if we just compare it to the left one, but that also might just be like the shoulders tilted. Yeah, like if we, compare, if we compare the angle that the, oh, the ground okay. is on, and it doesn't look like she's doing anything with her hip. Like the shoulders aren't on the same plane. Yeah, it, it's just it's yeah. the far one's lifted. It's a higher. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I think to be honest, that could probably just be solved by a little bit of like messing with okay. this elbow sort of thing, having this like be a little bit more like into 
I don't know. I had to focus, well, not focus, but like take a lot of my human anatomy to be able to complete this because I mm. have no reference picture and I wasn't able to find any. <laughs> so the shoulder lifting up is a human thing, which should not happen on a pony. <laughs> Yeah, human anatomy. Um, pony shoulders are incredibly weird. Yeah. so I don't blame you yeah. for human anatomy. <laughs> the, way, well, the way we do ponies is basically cats with a bit of human mixed in. Let's face it. <laughs> to, to be honest, I like it though. Like the yeah, if it works, it works. It doesn't need to be horse accurate. It's, it's exactly. something that we've proved time right. and time again on the streams. You've, you've got the emotion there. I, f I feel like because we're seeing them so side on, we might see like a little bit of like that back ear as well. But, oh, sure. Mm, just, just a tiny little smidgen. Maybe. Maybe. Who knows? Who knows? You got any further questions for us? Uh, Len, you got any other pressing issues now that we've talked about the the crying horse? I don't think so. Yeah, it it, it should be fine. All right. Is she gonna get a plushie and a hug? She needs one. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. <laughs> no sad. I just want to say I really love the eye you did and the tears. Like I just really enjoy yeah, the texturing you did there. That's so good. That whole section is just. And yes. and this, like the, all of the the back, sort of, yeah. Now that's that's constructed really nicely. I have worked very hard on faces my whole life. That's why mm. I'm struggling so much on bodies and stuff. <laughs> oh, I like this. Did I have that, or is that? Yeah, that, that's someone that added that in. Yeah, it it, oh, it's the, it looked a little bit too straight in there, so I just do that around the areas of the hair where it connects to the head. Just gives it a bit of volume there. Allie is you don't have to do it like <laughs> quite that much. Like I don't even do it that much, but like gen that general idea, I I would add to it just in the future. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, she's... I might just change it because why not? <laughs> she's trying to give herself a haircut, and she's failing. That's why she's crying. <laughs> oh. oh no! Who gave her a knife? <laughs> <laughs> no. There's a CPC. <laughs> Things are getting dangerous. All right, let's hop on to our next one. We're yep. going to do suborgans next to it. So this is... Uh, backwards today. Yes, we're backwards today. This is by Suborgan. I finished that piece a week ago and then decided to redraw it with shapes made with lasso tool. But the main focus was ambient light. Because... Main cause... focus. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Because they did I... say they were focusing on something other than just, hey, how's this picture? I, I decided to toss it in here. Nice. I love, I love this one. I love how it ended up. All, yeah. all of this up here with like the value work and like just messing. Very like, cool the, to see. The amount of cleanup between this picture and that picture, like the simplification and extra consideration that have been put into like simplifying the shapes and all that is just super plain to see and it looks really nice so i love that since the the legs go from sort of folded straight it looks like that if you look between images they're just like, <laughs> like lifting up the fabric mm. so my problem here is i don't understand your light source because it doesn't fully match up if we if we were to draw well, I guess I got a pen here. I could draw it. If we're to yeah. like trace <laughs> along the the implied light, that big light streak we're getting behind to be this very, uh, very bright and intense, but very shallow light. What I mean by that is it casts very sharp edges, much like um, a flashlight or something like that. It gives very sharp edges, but it's very it's from a very narrow point. Um, so you're getting. Your, your light is casting this direction. Let me go brighter. This direction, right? It's following this line. And then you've got areas laid out where the shadow is actually cast, or the shadow is falling 
like against it, not not going where or not being cast by an object. So things like arms like this, you'd be getting more of a shadow here because this arm is sitting perpendicular to that one, so we're we're creating an arm there. Mm. And you'd also values like these dark values that are found on any of your shadows where it's been cast for a bit more than just the edge of it get very dark but things like the backside of her hoof isn't despite the fact that that is a complete opposite of where the light source is coming from and it looks like you actually up the value on that one if we go look at your other one um that one's like a medium bright, like a medium gray there, and then you up the value on the back end here. I would just darken some of those areas. It's the last final touches sort of deal. Do Sorry. This reflected light, though. Oh, we yeah. got colors reflecting. Boom. That's so good. So the part that stands out to me is this area right here up in the up in the main it's hard to tell that that is sort of the inside of the hair and what what i would do uh, to help with that is think about uh the technique is called subsurface scattering and so like basically because light is coming through here and like scattering through the hair it'll add like a bit of warmth and all that sort of stuff so like you know some of this sort of colory kind of kind of stuff just to what it does is it shows that that's that side that like back side that we're not seeing is being hit directly by the hair and it differentiates it from like the rest of the hair around here kind of thing you'll you'll see it like like here in the ear where it's like you know a bit of red being added and all that sort of stuff same similar kind of like deal but just in the hair sort of thing Yeah. This is like really good um design wise and all that sort of kind of stuff. Just yeah. Really good stuff. I think the position of the hooves kinda of confused me a little bit. Because they're like folded over each other and they aren't like folded down like they are in these examples. It's like a little bit harder to sort of justify them as like being like in these sort of positions. But, you know, we're good. no big stress. I'd almost say that if you were going for this kind of effect, it might be good to like, um, this uh, shoulder here to have that one coming over and across like this and showing off like this big swatch of green fabric and then to have this like red fabric laying up against like a um uh a table or over the side of a chair or something like that and have that like reflecting onto this area just to sort of simplify things a little bit to simplify like the um whole pose and to not have like two different hooves crossing over each other and all that sort of stuff but you know no big stress still looks like a good picture i'm so excited to see the um progression you've made like even in the past like couple of months it's just been crazy All right, shall we move on to our next lovely picture? For sure. Yep, and Saborgan, please keep sending us stuff, because it's always a pleasure to see your drawings. All right, our last one submitted this week is by Not A Burner, and it's fully colored and shaded doodle of my OC. Questions? Look at this floppy horse. Hell yeah. This fluffy horse. Mm -hmm. A very fluffy horse. Artist after TPC's horse. heart. 
Oh, man. Those clouds are fun. Mm. Very pastely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm amazed when CBC avoids fluffing the word fluff. So, I think I think this horse is really nice. Good, um, uh, 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 good colors. Good, uh, you know, fluff and all that kind of sort of stuff. I think it's the um, proportions could be could be something to focus on. So, pretty much like how big the body is compared to the head, how big the neck is compared to things and all that sort of stuff and what i would recommend is if you go onto our subreddit and into the sidebar there's the uh, uh bi-weekly challenges and if you go to bi-weekly challenge number 43 it's uh it's about life drawing which is basically um seeing pictures of real animals and then trying to sketch them, trying to like, you know, get them down in 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes. So those sorts of like short time frames. And that's stuff that really helped me with um, uh, getting my proportions sort of embedded in my head. So that might be helpful. Because I think the head, the head looks uh, pretty big compared to sort of the rest of the body so you could probably pudge up the body here and add a bit of a shoulder and have this hoof be a bit longer and bigger and all that just all that sort of stuff head head is bulky so the rest of it can be bulked up a bit But good posing and stuff. It's it's rare to see this sort of like interesting poses that make sense. What about that mane? Mm -hmm. See red lines on the mane. Yeah, that was me. What's your thoughts just kind of going back to what Pixie said, be careful about, or just pay attention. Focus on the proportions, because the hair looks incredibly thin compared to how big the head is. So I just fluffed it up a bit more, so it looks more proportional to the head. Uh, same thing uh, with the ear, kind of, it needed to be bigger, and if you think about where the ear is on a horse, it is not directly next to their eye. It's going to be back on the back and upper part of their head, so it just scooted that back as well. Heck yeah. You can see Len drawing some very helpful guides about wings and how to structure them and all that stuff. You'll see on um, uh, wing tutorials and all that sort of stuff, they'll have this um, same kind of color-coded um, uh, examples to show off like the different types of feathers on the wing and basically separate them out by like, you know, 
these feathers are going to act and look in this sort of direction. These ones are going to like act in this way compared to these ones and all that. So. I haven't figured out the outside yet. <laughs> <laughs> I think as it gets sort of like close to the um, origin, there's like also like some feathers that go like across to basically hide that or make that transition smooth. Depends on, yeah. which, on which animal, <laughs> but most mm. likely. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, that's another reason why like the life drawing can be really cool because you can do it with uh, horses to, to try to like get the proportions more embedded in your head. You can do it with um, dogs and cats to try to do that and to try to get pose help. Yeah, and you can do it with birds to, like, get a good overview of, like, different sorts of wings and how they tend to look and how they tend to um, be coloured and all that sort of stuff. And that can be really cool for, like, when you're drawing uh, pegasi in the future, pegasi ponies. It's a really fun, happy pose and really fun, happy horse. Very cute. All right. Uh, anyone else have any other questions? Any other art that like critiqued? Go one twice. Sold. All right, so then we'll be calling that a day. Uh, thank you all for coming. We'll see you again next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.